What's going on? It's your boy Pop DiBiase sitting here at the Super Bowl with a loafer, tattoo, but he we used to call him tattoo because he would be tattooing people all day over there with uh, the Trojans and with the Seahawks. Loafer, what brings you to Miami? Um, I'm here actually promoting my, my CBD company and uh, and talking football, of course. You know, but Zone in CBD is uh, largely what I came here to to represent and uh, tell people about, and uh, and it's been a good week so far. All right, educate us a little bit about your uh, CBD uh, startup. Okay, so I my, my journey into uh, the hemp and cannabis industry started several years ago, and I kept hearing things about CBD. And what CBD is, it's a beneficial compound from the hemp plant that acts on our ECS. It's an endocannabinoid system that naturally occurs in our body and mind with receptors signaling back and forth, just checking in, making sure we're at homeostasis. That's why we call the product balance, because it balances you out. So... Um, in the three years of taking it, um, I lost 45 pounds. I'm back to my playing weight, uh, back dunking a basketball, and then cognitively, so in terms of memory, uh, focus, and attention span, I've never been sharper. Man, beautiful stuff. Now, where can the where can somebody go ahead and pick this product up at? Uh, we have an e-commerce site online, so zoneincbd.com is where you can find us. And um, we, we did just relaunch in, uh, 67, in Bar 67 stores in Bartels uh, Drugs out in Washington. So that was, that was a big, big win for us, uh, and we appreciate that partnership with them. And that's great because Washington is just now getting into the recreational marijuana game and everything like that. So it's pretty. So it's like you're very, right there at the start of everything. So how does it feel to be like a pioneer up there for that? I wouldn't call myself a pie. I appreciate you calling me one, but uh, yeah, no, it's um, if you're going to learn something, learn something new. And so when, when I got in the industry three years ago, it was to buy real estate and really start my entrepreneurship uh, in that. And, um, and then I didn't know it would launch into a life-changing event for me of me becoming my best self. I, you know, when I left the game, I thought, you know, okay, that was, that was the peak of my, my existence, even in terms of, uh, you know, mental aptitude and, you know, and focus and, and, and drive. And I feel better than I did in any, I feel like when I was, you know, taking the field in the Coliseum, that's how good I feel right now. Man. And you know, a lot of these NFL teams need you right now. I think they do. Seriously, they need a smart defense. I think player like I think I'd probably want to test the XFL waters first because <laughs> they're starting, <laughs> and then maybe make the shift and uh, you know, as kind of a tune-up, try to see if I could I could hang with those boys. But I know what it takes, and I know it sounds insane. I could go back out there, but the question is, how long would I last? I don't know. But I got what it takes to 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 fix whatever you know is ailing me after that. Got you. So that means L.A. Wildcats, y'all better give them a call because I know you guys want to sell tickets. So, you know, you better give them a call. Seattle Dragons got a team, too, now. So <laughs> I, I can't wait. February 15th, they're, you know, they're kicking off. Hey, I can't wait either. L.A. Wildcats are kicking off in Texas on the 22nd, I think. Yeah, 22nd in Houston. All right, so I know we. It, this was just killed everybody this week, Sunday. It was so unexpected. What are your thoughts on Kobe Bryant passing? It's uh, incredibly sad, um, the tragedy, man. Uh, I was on the plane when I heard about it, and it, you know, just ripple effect all the way back to, to the end of the plane. You heard everybody saying it can't be true, it can't be true. And I was at SC at the time when he was at the height of his first tour of dominance, um, scoring, scoring champ a couple times, and then also uh, three, three titles, you know, from 2000 to 2004. So um, I know what he meant to that city, but it's really about what he meant to the world. And um, these, it'll, it'll be felt for, for a long time here. And uh, my heart goes out to him and the other family that was on board. Rest in peace, Kobe Bryant. Rest in peace, Gigi. And rest in peace to everybody else that was on the plane. Um, now, let's get down to business, man. USC, your years at USC, and the direction of the program. You know, everybody wanted Helton gone. How do you feel about that? But first, let's talk about your USC years first before we get into that. Uh, okay, well, yeah, there's a lot of winning going on in our years, in, right. in, in those years. 25-1 and one, uh, as a starter with, with that squad. I mean, I had first-round picks all over that defensive line, so uh, it made my job really easy, you know, getting those interceptions because the ball was coming out quick. Uh, and it helps when you have one of the top-rated offenses with Matt Liner, Reggie, you know, two Heisman Trophy winners. We just followed a third one in, in Carson Palmer. He was, uh, when we were redshirting, you know, he was, uh, he was the man. So, uh, and then I got to learn and watch film behind uh, Troy Polamalu, man. I mean, uh, you know, you can't do a lot of the things that, you know, you can't teach what he does, but you can see how he sets people up. And I think, you know, I was able to add some of that to my repertoire in terms of, you know, zone coverage. Okay. And your thoughts on USC's direction right now. Do you think they're in good hands with Coach Helton? 
Uh, we'll see. You know, it still remains to be seen. We're putting up points, right? So, um, you know, just got to get a little more stout on the on the defensive side. And, uh, you know, the thing we preached, um, and, you know, it's only fitting with, with Ed O, you know, you know, winning his national title was discipline. You know, that's, you know, not, you know, going off sides, no, no penalties. Don't, don't beat yourself. It's hard enough to beat the other team, but when you're fighting yourself, uh, you're not going to win many games. And, 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 you know, you know the standard from which, uh, you know, we all know SC as. That's, a, you know, traditionally, um, if SC is good, man, it's, you know, life is good. Exactly. All right, and let's get into your pro career. Um, your ten, your years in Seattle. You were a three-time Pro Bowler. How was the experience in Seattle, and how was the experience being a rookie in the Super Bowl, the same game? Yeah, it was incredible. We were just coming off the heels of two straight national titles, so I felt like I, you know, I had a good grasp on how to handle it. Um, you know, it was an incredible journey going from two national titles right to the Super Bowl, and um, and then even following up with the Pro Bowl after that, um, which was was an incredible honor. And that only happens because you have a great team, you know. And and we fell a little short, you know, in Detroit, but um, you know, it was it was all about the journey and uh, and getting there. Yeah, Ben Roethlisberger didn't score that touchdown either. <laughs> I'm still mad about it because I'm a betting man, and that messed up a lot of money because I was. This is before Seattle became Legion of Boom, all that stuff. Everybody was just thinking about the team Northwest. I was all over Seattle that season because they had this this man out there killing it. So it was it was an easy call. It's Shauna Alexander as well. Am I correct? Yes, yeah. Yep. So also, man, Simone descent. The Simone impact in the NFL now. You know, it started with your father and others as well too. I know everybody's almost a big tribe and everything like that. Everybody is very aware of each other. How does it feel to see so many of your brothers in the league right now? It's incredible, um, you know, and um, and hopefully, you know, I inspired a couple of them. I don't know. I know Junior, Junior Seau, man, his poster was on my wall. Um, rest in peace, Junior. Um, that guy, I got to meet him, be around him a couple times, and he was just an um, uh, incredible, incredible person on top of athlete. And, uh, you know, he transcended the game and, and the way the linebacker position was played. And then the, the several grades after that you got to watch. But he was the one that was like, that was my idol, and I wanted to, that's why I wanted to play linebacker. Got you. And since I'm talking about the Samoa brothers and everything like that, we have Tua. Do you think Tua is still worthy of the first round pick? Because that's a very, very uh, critical injury that he that did occur in that game. What do you think? Would an NFL team be very smart to go ahead and get him in the first round? Yeah, I don't know about the significance of the injury and like what kind of you know consequences are there for continuing to play on it. But I know this that. Man, that guy's vision and his ability, you know, to extend the play, that's way the that's really where the game's shifting right now. Mahomes, Lamar, uh, D. Watt, Deshaun Watson, the, you know, it's getting more and more mobile back there. And Russ and the, all the incredible things he's been able to do in uh, his career. So um, I think as long as he heals, you know, he'll be fine because, you know, he makes some phenomenal reads. And um, it'll just be exciting to see him play. Man. All right. Now, I'm getting a little confused because you graduated from high school in Massachusetts, but you were born in San Diego, so I know you're a California boy. So name your favorite four teams from the NBA, NHL, MLB, and the NFL. Oh, I'm, I'm so a Boston boy because, you know, I was born during the strike year, 82. That's why I was born in San Diego where my mom's family was. And then when that lifted, we came back over, and I, my dad had another nine years with the Patriots. He played 13 in total over there. And uh, so, you know, when I wasn't in it, when me or the Hawks weren't in it, it was rooting for, you know, Tom Brady and the Patriots. And I know it's going to make the Seattle faithful cringe right now. But then I also love the Chargers because of Junior. Um, I always rooted for Thurman Thomas, though. You know, that was my favorite running back. I thought I was going to be running back when I was young. And then I realized I had no moves. And, you know, <laughs> hands were okay. They were good for a linebacker, not for a running back. But then uh, love my Celtics, love my Bruins. And I, that's, you know, those are my teams, uh, you know, on, on the East Coast, man. All right. And just w one quick question. How was it like going to the University of Maine and then going to USC? I, it was a bit of a, you know, transition, if you will. Uh, uh, as far as, you know, atmosphere, uh, you know, you go from the woods to, you know, palm trees. So so that was that was a nice transition. But um, I always enjoyed playing in the cold since I grew up in Massachusetts. Uh, so I did miss that. I loved my time at Maine. But um, I didn't think the NFL was promised to me unless I went and showed I could play on the big, you know, big, big level, big screen, big stage. So uh, I took that chance. And because, you know, if anything, the combine, that hurt me in the draft. I probably dropped a couple slots, you know, running a 4-8-40 uh, 
So mine was always a mental game, and that's where I flourished, you know, in, uh, in terms of processing the information and, and relaying it to my, uh, my teammates. Only thing that matters is what's on the film. That's it, and that's all. Okay. This guy anyway. Yeah, <laughs> that's what that's what Mike Holmgren was thinking when he drafted him because this guy, man, it didn't matter what round you got him, he was going to be productive regardless. But it's a beauty. Low for my man, USC Cali boys, man, Boston boy too. I'm a Laker fan, but it's all good. It's all good because it's all respect. But everybody's a Kobe fan, so, right? Yeah. So it's all respect, Laker Celtics. Hopefully, we can get the finals. I see him at the game in Boston. <laughs> And this is your boy Pop DiBiase signing out with my main man Lofa Tattoo. And we going Fanatics View. All right. What's up sports fans? Breon Page here with Fanatics View. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. If you enjoyed watching and you want to see more content, subscribe down below.